Welcome to iCook, You Measure, presented by Ascend Hospitality Group. I'm your host, Jen Mueller, and today I don't really need a guest measure. I just need a guest because it is our Bonus Bites show, which means Elena has a much easier job than any of my other guests. Are you sure it's going to be easy? I think so, but you really okay. have no idea what you're getting into, I don't, right? but I'm excited. Okay, well... We are going to air bonus bites. That means things that landed on the cutting room floor that did not make it into original episodes. And it is always a bonus to talk to Elena because she is the president and CEO of Ascend Hospitality Group. Thank you for welcoming us to the beautiful restaurant that you have in Bellevue, Ascend Prime Steak and Sushi. Thank you for being here. And I will tell you, I never say no to Jen. So when she asks, I'm here and I love it and I'm so grateful today. We're gonna have a great time and uh, let's do it. Okay, well, you know that we always pair our conversations with wine. Today is no exception. It is a Washington mm. wine. I do not have anything for you to measure. I do have something for you to do. Could you please? This is gonna be good. I love, love where this is going. So, proper bubbles. 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 Uh, sparkling wine, as we cannot call it champagne, as Correct. you guys know, we've already covered this, but I know that you're going to love the story of this. This is from Aluve. It is a husband-wife duo that started this winery in Walla Walla, Washington, and they are former Air Force pilots. Yes. JJ and Kelly, they are awesome. He flew fighter jets. She flew the refueling jets. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Isn't are those that the ones that come up behind it? Yes. Or on the side? That's crazy. More than 20 years of military service, yeah. but they traveled all over the world together as part of their military post. So they had a chance to try a great wine. They developed their own palate. Yeah. Their wine is phenomenal. This is one of the projects they released last year. So I'm super excited. I'm about super it. excited as well. I like to think of my friendship with Jen as I'm her refueling jet. <laughs> it's very fun. Come up alongside, pour your wine. <laughs> He's ever said that, but the idea of a refueling jet Friend. with wine, mm -hmm. yes. That sounds good, I think it? I'm going to give you a bomber jacket with a patch that says refueling Refueling jet. jet. <laughs> That's my job. It's yeah. to make sure her wine is full. Full? I'm, it, I'm almost afraid of what's nope. about to happen. Don't worry. I'm almost afraid I'm because not I forgot. Saber. No. I forgot. It's okay. This one is particularly. Okay. So the key. Oh. The key is a saber and also to make sure that it's not quite in there so hard. <laughs> Please hold. We're definitely not going to shake this up. I, I don't even know what so to do. So typically what you would do is you would, so if this were real, um, because this is obviously not real, no, we would, we would take a, we would, we would just be standing at the side of your table here. Right and we would turn it and it would go boop. Right. But that is not what has That's happened. That's not what's happening. Um, do we need to call in the big guns? We, we may need a, this we may need a big scripted, gun. This and is this is fantastic. Completely not scripted. Um, so I'm just gonna look around here for a person. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. Um, could you, that's one of my sommeliers right there. Oh. Could we grab him and we will, and you know what we're gonna do in the meantime? Yeah. Look, I know that anything pairs well with bubbles. Is there a food that you will not eat though? Because it yes. has been, really? Yes, there is a food I will not eat. I love all kinds of food, but. What are you not going to eat? Well, I think you said somebody referred to not discriminating against. Yeah, Abe Lucas told us like he does not discriminate against food, very mm -hmm. much like I do not discriminate against wine or food. Okay. But there's clearly something that you're not. Hold going on, to. a professional is coming. A professional a is professional coming. A professional is coming. This is definitely not anything that I can manage. I'm not sure what has happened here. Thank you. We have the official presentation. I mean, I guess we're going to figure out who's working out and who's not. It's not cold enough. Oh, no. Well, I hope this doesn't mean that I'm not getting my bubbles today. Well, we can, do we have a fast chiller? I do, I do believe my technique would be to grab a pair of pliers <laughs> and hold on to that cord. You cannot make this up. Okay, well, meanwhile. Um, meanwhile, the food you won't eat is. The food I will not eat and I do discriminate heavily against a bell pepper, red or green. 
Yellow and orange, I can muster. I can really? manage. Not a bell pepper. Really? Yeah. That's interesting mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it is by color that mm -hmm. you can't handle that. It is, uh, they are overly ripe. Mm. They are extraordinarily pungent and they take over a flavor. You know that one person in the room that just, they don't run the room, they just take the room over? That's, yeah. a, that's a green bell that's pepper. That's a green bell yeah. pepper. I'm from Maryland, and mm. uh, Maryland is for crabs. Yeah. And uh, a crab meat has a very, very mild flavor. And some one, I still don't know, I should do my Maryland history research about uh, who the Bright Idea Brigade, is what I like mm -hmm. to call them, decided to put a pepper into, into a, a crab, crab cake. cake. Yeah. It, it, for whatever reason, it has become a thing. And you know what, it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. No. You know what, I don't think Nico Thorpe thought anything we made was a good idea because we started with onions, it went downhill from there, cool. and as it turns yeah. out, not a fan of guac either. Wow. Who doesn't like guacamole? <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna ask you favorite teammate. I'm not gonna ask you, like, because that puts people on the spot. Uh, I am going to ask you, what's the story you tell most often about your professional career? Uh, the story I tell most often is uh, when I signed here, the day I signed. Why? In, back in 15, 2015, when I had a... Uh, because it was it's a unique story. So I, I went to the Indianapolis Colts for a day. A lot of people don't know this. Worked out with them guys or whatever. And then they cut me or whatever. So then uh, my agent like, you got to work out with Seattle. So I come out here and the day that I'm working out, my lady is having the baby, our second child. But I'm like, I'm here. They back in Cali. So I'm like, damn, you know, I'm trying to see if I'm gonna make the workout, or, you know, figure out what's gonna go on, maybe I can fly back and make it. And then like literally get in the locker room, not knowing if I'm gonna make the team, finna get in the shower, phone ringing, it's my mother-in-law, get on FaceTime, and you know, like watch it, boom, kid come out, then they like come down like, Mr. Thor, we're going to sign you there. I'm like, woo, thank God, because I, I just had a baby. Like, <laughs> I need that, bruh. But then, you know, it did. It was wild. Then, like, literally, boom, sign that day. My second, Nor, uh, Nora was born, uh, what, September 13th. And then, um, like boom, I go sign that. I go. I had a homeboy out here. He lived. He was from the A. He re, he randomly moved to Seattle. So when I had to work out, I'm calling him like, bro, I'm finna work out or whatever. Then I called him to him, made a team. So I'm at his crib, and then I get a phone call and it's Pete. And Pete goes, Oh man, we heard you just had a baby. Like the coaching staff want to say what's up to you. So in my head, I'm like, damn, the coaching staff like. Uh, they don't even know me. Like, I literally just worked out for them, just got on the team probably like an hour ago. I'm like, oh, this is love. You know, like, boom. So literally, like, 20 coaches, like, hey, man, congrats, boo, 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 man. Can't wait to see, you know, uh, when you get on the squad, whatever. Like, heard you hell of a player. So boom, hang up. I mean, before I hang up, Pete goes, so what do you say you was doing? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just at my homeboy career. And he go, uh, why don't you go to the airport? We got a, a ticket for you to go home and kiss your newborn baby and just, uh, you just come back tomorrow and practice. I'm like, all right, bet. So literally, like, went to the airport, went, went back to Cali, went uh, to, the air, uh, to the hospital and did the whole thing, like, knocked on the door, didn't tell my lady and stuff, and then, like, shocked the world. But shout out to the gang, Pete and the gang, man, John, all them guys, like, that's it. I tell that story to tell people like the type of people that they are. Like for them to do that from the from, from day one, I was like, oh yeah, this is a place where I could, you know, I feel like I could let loose and just like give them everything I got. So I was like, let's go. But yeah, that's my story. I did not know that story in yeah. all my years of working with you. I Seriously, did not know that yeah, story. Seriously, yeah, it happened so fast, like. Working out, FaceTime, on the plane, seeing the new baby, literally coming right back to in practice. And then 
like played that next game and like led the team in special team tackles. Like, I was like, oh, I'm from the ball. I'm like, it's up, it's up. <laughs> yeah, that's how it went down, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, shout out to the game. My guys, <laughs> those are my guys. All right, let me check on this, because we've got, ooh, those look good. Oh, yeah. All right, they're close. Here's what we're going to do. Do you want to do the chopping? Of course. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a little chopping. It can be a rough chop, because it's all just going to go in here. All right, let's go for it. Your knife skills are something. Are they, are they different? They are different. I would like to That's call this. That's a different technique than what most people would use. This is what you call the safety, you know? I can't cut my other hand if it's not up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. right. That's true. That is true. You feel me? I, that is true. And shout out to this. The knife is getting the job done, you know? I mean, it's doing what a knife should do. Right. Can I show you uh, how to do a clove of garlic? Uh, yeah, sure. What you got? So, I have a clove of garlic. I'm actually gonna do it this way because I think it's gonna make it easier. I'm gonna take the little ends off that are kind of hard. That peeled pretty easily. Oops. Oh, shoot. Fire in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> Fire in the hole. Let's okay. go. All right. Let's go retrieve that. Oh, we need that. We, we need that. I have another one. I used a knife blade that was a little too small. All right, y'all. We're not going to use this one. Actually, no, we're not going to use we're that one. We're not going to use this one. We promise. <laughs> well, so we're... here's the thing. <laughs> I'm pretty. Jerry, you're gonna have to cut that. <laughs> no, nah, that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everybody, protect this. We're just themselves. gonna do this. No, we're gonna do this. It's coming off. So if we had the larger knife blade from earlier, you would smash it a little bit, and then this would just come off. Right now, I'm gonna have you. Actually, you've got People's wine elbow in your hands. Huh? <laughs> oh, what? I thought you wanted me to drop my elbow on it. No. Okay. Well, you could. Why don't I just do this? What but are if you? that other part get cut, they're not going to know what I'm talking about. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go in the... Um, that's going to go in the outtakes. Oh, yeah. That'll go in the holiday special. Okay. Would you put all of that in here? Mmm... I know, it's not your favorite, but it's going to be so pretty. This that make them say, uh, by Master P. This is, uh, I know, I know some people, their mouth is watering at the house, though, for sure. I'm already knowing. They be telling me I'll be asleep. Maybe you'll just try. Just A one lot of people more. like to eat, you know, go out and eat with me. and Because they already know. All they got to do is, you know. Order some guap and dip and <laughs> some, you know, I'm, I'm good on it. Okay, um, do, you, do you do any jalapeno at all? I do not, but okay. we're going to need that in there. No. We want the best Here's guap what we're gonna we do. got. I need you to squeeze this into there. All right. Got it? Yes. All right. Perfect. We want a little citrus to balance that out. There it is. You can just toss that in the sink. Done. You can also use like any citrus you have. So if you have an orange or a tangerine. Lemons. You can use some lemon. I prefer lime. Oh, dang. But you certainly can. Stay away from okay. the lemons, y'all. Go with the limes. I mean, like, that doesn't taste like clay. It just doesn't. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Who <laughs> <laughs> look like Jen will lie to you? That, that hey, is not a ringing endorsement. That, That's not how we make an endorsement. Hey, that guac right there is probably one of the best guacs ever made. You know? Here's the secret. And I did learn this uh, from a gal that cooks a lot. She used to bring us guac in the um, Mariner's Cafeteria. So there's a lot of things that you can do to make sure that it doesn't get brown. We're probably gonna, I'm probably gonna eat the whole thing. But 
if you have leftovers and just the, just the teeniest, tiniest, I mean like the smallest bit of half and half, we'll keep it I barely from see going brown. Going there. And it does not change the flavor. What it changes is kind of like that chemical makeup so that now it doesn't go brown. Easy. Okay, Nico makes me laugh so hard. He was one of my favorites in the Seahawks locker room. You have been in different locker rooms. You were an elite athlete growing up, yes, a was. soccer player. Yes. What is the story you tell most often about your soccer career? <sighs> oh, it is um, the story of tearing my ACL. That's not where I thought we were gonna go with Where this. were we going? I thought we were going with a happy story. Oh. I mean, you it's can tell whatever story not you great. want. Um, well, no, I mean, listen, my soccer career was full of all kinds of wonderful things that made me who I am today, mostly like the sisterhood of a soccer team and the camaraderie. One of my favorite, most favorite people who I played ODP with, which is the Olympic Developmental Program, I was on Premier Soccer with, and who I played college soccer with lives in Seattle. Oh. And she is a lovely person, and these are friends for life. Yeah. We won together, we lost together, and it, it is, um, it is a sisterhood I will always have till the end of time. And what is so special, my son plays Premier Soccer and we are headed back to Greensboro for nationals and that is where I played. So, uh, but the story I tell most often is that I looked like a sniper took me out when I tore my ACL. Sniper. <laughs> Absolutely the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened and it was awful. <laughs> okay, maybe a happier memory. Yes. Favorite athlete growing up? Mia Hamm. Mm. Mia Hamm. Christine Lilly and Mia Hamm, um, if I'm gonna age myself like massively here, but uh, I went, I graduated high school in 1994 and played soccer until 1998 in college. Um, prior to that, Mia Hamm, Christine Lilly, April yeah. Heimrichs, they all ran the soccer camps at Duke and North Carolina, and that's where we went to soccer camp. They were my coaches, and it was, it was incredible. That's a fun story. Yeah, that's and look, a fun story. We have oh, bubbles. And look, we didn't even have to savor the I top. I kind of feel like maybe you were just getting out of doing any work for the show. Maybe that was I it. I kind of feel like that. And I'm really good at opening a champagne bottle. I mean, we have lots of practice. Cheers. Cheers. He was right. But it's it is delicious. delicious. Absolutely. It is delicious. delicious. Mm -hmm. We are going to enjoy this, and you are going to revisit part of the conversation with Jeremy Bryant. Remember, he has spent his entire career in the kitchen, a lot of that time in the Mariners Clubhouse, and he's got stories for a lifetime. Um, biggest mess you've made in the kitchen? Oh, man. Big. We've had some really big messes in the kitchen there. Um, we had a player come through one time. I had just made a marinara sauce for the post-game meal. And it was a huge pot. And this player, I won't mention any names, was running by, bumped into the pot, and it just hit the floor. And just, not only was the dinner ruined, but the mess was everywhere. And we had to clean up the mess as well because he was in a hurry, he was late to a plane or something. And I mean, that kind of stuff would happen. We had, we had an incident where the entire meal for batting practice was in the warming oven and one of a person who was maybe not supposed to be in there was was going in there to steal a piece of bacon knocked the shelf and then all the food came tumbling down inside the warmer i mean this just all kinds of stuff like that the, the best one ever that's not it's good now because i still had the job <laughs> okay clubhouse manager ted walsh He's, he has to leave that day during the game to go sign papers to, to buy a house, right? And we didn't have a deep fryer, but the players love fried shrimp. So I would get these coconut shrimp and I'd just fry them up on a pot. Well, down in the clubhouse, I had this huge pot of oil and I turned it off because I wanted to go take my break and go watch the game a little bit. So I turned it off and my, my assistant at the time, Jerry, he turned it on thinking that he turned it off. So he turned it the other direction anyway. So we go up, you may remember this game. We're, Jamie Moore is pitching. We're, it's gotta be seventh or eighth inning. And there's an, a fire alarm that goes off in the entire stadium. And it's like, whoop, whoop, and there's lights and the game stops and everyone's looking around and all the elevators are stopped. I mean, it's like a big deal. There's a real fire somewhere. <laughs> and 
I'm up in the 300 level in a cheap seat that I just found, and I'm sitting there going, oh man, some, some you know, knucklehead left, must have left his fryer on or something. I come down into the clubhouse, and there's an entire, the, there's three firemen who have just put out the fire. The whole, we had caught the, the, the pot had melted, and then it just caused a huge grease fire. They had to, you know, the fire suppression went off, and it was just a, a huge mess. The dinner was ruined. I had to run over to the visiting side, Chef Kenny, and say, I need some of your food, because our food was, it was just, it couldn't have been a worse mess. And I'm so thankful to this day that Ted was not in the clubhouse, because I would, I would have got fired immediately, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't there, and he didn't, and I had that whole thing cleaned up, like literally before he came back and, and I got the fireman out of there and I, I, I like, got don't tell anybody, yes. don't tell anybody. And to this day, if you go in that kitchen, you can see the black smoke, you know, markings from that day. Oh man, it was, I was so scared, but nobody got hurt. And they even got their shrimp later because I had to get a new pot. <laughs> <laughs> We've well, had some major situations down there. Okay, so what's the meal? And you, again, you went to culinary school. Yeah. You're a trained chef. What's the meal that just isn't worth it, right? That everybody thinks is kind of the thing to make. And it's just not like you could do it differently. Yeah, gosh. Oh, that's a, that's a good question. There's, there's, there's a lot of things out there, you know, um, chicken marsala. That's, that's one, I, everyone loves chicken marsala. And I've learned all these really fancy recipes and there's a little dive bar that I go to that I love the chicken marsala there. And I finally got to know the chef and it's literally just garlic, wine, butter. And it's like super simple, you know? So there's, you do learn a lot of things about different items that I was trained to do it so much harder. And, and you know, it, like a fettuccine alfredo. Yeah. I know a recipe that has like 15 ingredients. And then I worked at a place, it's butter, garlic, cream, Parmesan. I mean, that's those four items and, it, and it's fabulous. You know what I mean? So. You know, you learn, and it, it also depends on who you're cooking for and how many people you're cooking. I don't make a meal for two people anymore. Everything is 50 or more, so that's That that's seems daunting. Yeah, it's so funny. When I do cook for my family, we have leftovers for days because I honestly can't cook for two people. It's just, it's, it's crazy. I just can't do it. It seems so small. <laughs> So your entire freezer is just... Yes. <laughs> well, everybody knows they get leftovers. I literally, at our home, we, we, I have the to-go boxes that yep. you get like in a uh -huh. restaurant, just because whenever I cook, there's always going to be leftovers because I always make so much. And um, yeah, I always cook, cook very fast now too, because all those years with the Mariners, you're always under the gun. And you're, I literally would watch the game while I'm cooking. And I knew if I didn't have that roast in by the third inning, it's not going to be done in time. I mean, you, you just learn all these things. And even when I'm cooking now for my catering business, I still will cook in that manner. Like, you know, it's kind of crazy. Most people are like, why are you doing it like this? But I, I have to be like stressed out. It just doesn't work. <laughs> I have to be under meanwhile, the gun. Meanwhile, for me, cooking is a chance to pour a glass of wine and maybe like relax, right. unless I'm trying to pull everything together at the same time. And then you're, you have to get timing, right? So that everything is timed out. And yeah. Oh, that timing. gets a little bit stressful, but. No, yes. like we're, we are exact opposites. When we cook. <laughs> yes, we, the timing is something that it, it really actually becomes like an art. Like you would, you would see the, the three chefs we had in the kitchen and it was a really tight space and we knew exactly when to fire the, the rice and we knew what inning to do this and that. And, and then you'd have the specialty guys that had their superstitions and you know, they gotta have this before the game, so in a, you know, or after the game. Uh, 2001, Paul Abbott, he had that great season. He was a big reason why we won so many games. He wanted salmon on the nights that he pitched. And there was just days where I just forgot. I just didn't have the salmon. And I, I literally called my mom who lives far away. I'm like, mom, I need you to go to the store and get one piece of salmon. <laughs> you know, you would, there's all these things that are just spinning in your head all the time to, you know, cause you want to keep their superstitions going. And I had one big mistake to this day, Jeff Cirillo. The day I met him at spring training, he said to me, I like carrots. Every day, can you just have carrots in my locker? Just raw carrots. That was kind of his superstition. So every day, from the day I met him, I had carrots in his locker. And we had some special day. I don't remember exactly what happened, but he had this 99 game, no error streak going. And 
we didn't we forgot to put the carrots in his locker that it was, it was either me or my my assistant would help me and we both just forgot the carrots and I, I didn't hit me until he got the error and then I was like it's my fault it's totally my fault and and I, and jokingly later on he said to me thanks for the carrots <laughs> <laughs> I was like, because I was hoping he didn't remember, you know. The to this thing day, that he eats every day when every he didn't day. have it, you were hoping he wasn't going to remember? Yeah, I know, right? And it was totally my fault. I'm sorry, Jeff. Okay, look, I have my own stressors when it comes to making sure the timing is correct when I'm, like, serving dinner. I cannot imagine what it would be like to be Chef Jeremy racing the clock as the game is getting over, because it's different every night. That would be like... What's yes. the biggest mess you've either made or seen in a kitchen? Whew. Well, uh, I will have to say, a Sun Prime Steak and Sushi serves 600 guests almost every night. And uh, when you work on a team like this, it's a cast, there's coordination, and it is like a, it's an opera. It is the most coordinated uh, show I've ever seen and production I've ever seen. The problem is, if you're a chef, you're executive chef, and you're on the expo line, and something happens like, I don't know, an entire meal comes back and you have to refire it, you have to jam it into the, into the procedure. Yeah, and it's then, like the conveyor belt at the airport yeah. when you're going, yeah. Everything gets backed up, and these guys do a tremendous job of making sure that it doesn't impact other guest experience. Mm. Um, and then that happens, if it happens multiple times, uh, it can it's, be a real a challenge. And so I'm sure many of your guests have seen the behind the scenes on some of the uh, celebrity chef shows yes. where they're just yelling at people to plate things. <laughs> That's the pressure. I'd like to point out, I've never once yelled at my guests to plate things. Yes, so yes. that I'm well already. You can't be an executive chef or a celebrity chef, okay? No. Well, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I can yell. We yeah. just try not to do that. Just, on it's very rude. Yeah, it's very rude. Very rude. What is your go-to to make? Like, if you're in the kitchen, what do you go to? Well, I have a team at home that loves spaghetti, and I will have to say I have an aunt, and I also have part of my family who makes spaghetti sauce from scratch. Oh. And pasta sauce is one of the easiest things you can make. Yeah. It's all about the quality of the tomato. Um, you don't use fresh tomatoes. Like I know uh, this is gonna be, now we're gonna be in an online fight about okay. this. Okay, all right. Just FYI. Um, I like to use a canned imported San Marzano mm -hmm. tomato uh, that has basil and you just get that Vitamix out. You cook those things down. You get your onion, your garlic. It's so basic and simple. Um, and it really, it's the gift that gives for most of the week. If you have people coming in different times, practices, you know, after school, it's delicious. It's my go-to. I love that you said tomatoes because um, we are going to have you play Virtual Master Chef, which oh my we have done with so many of our guests. Virtual wow. Master Chef is sponsored by Safeway. Thank, Thank you, Safeway. Safeway. So here's how it goes. I give you a list of five ingredients. You tell me what you would make with those five ingredients. Oh you ready? Gosh. I'm so ready. For full transparency, I'm not a chef. Well, we'll see. We'll see about Maybe it. Maybe you could be. Maybe I could be. Here we go. Okay. Tomatoes. Shallots, ricotta cheese, phyllo dough, pancetta. Calzone. Oh, bam, this is what I love. Bam. I was actually thinking like a, like a open tarts, like a tart kind of a, like a tomato kind of tart sort of thing. Tomato, oh yeah, you can do that. You yeah, but that. I love the idea but of the problem is you don't have any binder. Yeah, that's true. You know, like well, a, the, yeah. the little ricotta. Ricotta, ricotta the maybe. ricotta. Yeah, that would be delicious, though. Okay, I like I it. I love the idea. You want to yeah. do one more? Let's do one. Oh, my gosh. Okay, here we go. One more. Ground pork. Okay. Brown rice. Carrots. Green onions. Poison sauce. Dumplings. Yes. Like the inside. Yeah. Because I didn't have You know that. what I was actually thinking? I was thinking the fried rice, because we just had fried rice oh, together yeah. the other day. That's right. But I love, like, You could do, like, the inside of a dumpling. 
Yeah, I or love stir that. Fried, fried rice. That would be delicious. That was good too. That, that was, was really exceptional. good. Yeah, yeah, I love eating with mm -hmm. chefs and people that own restaurants. Yeah. That is a good pastime to have. Yeah. Um, Elena and I don't have a whole lot of time to cook, so sometimes, you know, like putting together an entire meal is ridiculous, but this, this is a breakfast I know anybody can make in just a couple minutes. Hey, I hate to spring a surprise on you, but I am gonna spring a surprise on you. I'm all about it. Because we're easy today, right? So I think of taquitos more as a snack than I think of as a dinner, so I'm gonna make one more snack with you. Right. And I'm gonna show folks how easy this is because it's really gonna come together in about two minutes and then it sits in the fridge. Let's go you ready for it. this? Yeah. We don't need a knife for this. I'm right. just gonna scoop this. Yeah, please be careful with the knife. Easy. Here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna make chia pudding. This is a giada recipe. So let me just pull the book over. Chia pudding, y'all. <laughs> I know some of y'all haven't heard of that, so just sit tight. She yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's what we're gonna do. It is breakfast pudding. I'm gonna reach down in here. You're oh, gonna do the that's measuring. Chia pudding. So here's what I need. I need from the recipe a half a cup plus two tablespoons of chia seeds. So all right. I'm gonna have you measure. Bam. I'm going in, this is going in there first, boom. Yep. All right. Now give me two of these. Same thing. Probably easier just to scoop it in, but you okay. can do it your way. Let's do it, let's do it. I'm learning here. One, two. Oh, there you we got go. it. Now we're gonna put two of these in here because what it calls for is two cups of unsweetened almond milk. I actually have vanilla okay. almond milk. So I'm just gonna shake it, and I'm gonna have you just pour it oh, in yeah, like that. I'm the only one. All right. I have actually been known to come home from road trips at like 3 a.m. and take five minutes to make this so that I can have something healthy to eat for breakfast because I don't always eat the most healthy options on the road. That's pretty. That's smart. I mean, <laughs> planner. That's I, a nice planner right there. I am right very there. much a planner. That's smart. I, I can't say that I've, I pre-made breakfast before, I think. No, you did? No, I, never, yeah. <laughs> I would love to say I have, I have, I have. I can't even lie on your show. Yeah. I was gonna be so impressed with you. Nah, cause I know the next question was what was it? <laughs> and that's where I was stuck. I didn't, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The recipe calls for two tablespoons. I could have you measure it yeah. out, but actually I'm gonna have you measure it right. out. What is that? Oh, well, it's just I some mean, maple syrup. It's just gonna sweeten it a little bit so that it's actually right. two tablespoons. So we you can, can go measure for a little that. extra of this. Dang, you got the perfect one for each one, huh? Well, you know, it's helpful Man. to have measuring spoons when right. you're cooking. Okay. I'm gonna put this in here because that's gonna make a mess. Super tempted to put a little more, but I don't wanna mess it up. <laughs> so this is what I was gonna say. Now I could follow the recipe and just put an exact teaspoon of vanilla in. I actually, do, I don't care, I would, you go, oh, I'm oh, just yeah. gonna let you do it. You're the one that's supposed to be right, measuring and doing right, it. Right, all right, boom, so. We, yeah? There it is. That's good. All right, not too much. How about a little shake of some cinnamon? What's the name of this again? For the, um, for the people at home that forgot, I got y'all. <laughs> the chia pudding? Chia pudding, Okay, Easy. and now, I just want you to whisk that together. It doesn't have to be hard, like, you don't have to like froth it up, we just need it to uh, be like mixed so that it's incorporated. Just get a little mix. That's crazy, go. I'm known to mix it up. You're gonna be so amazed at what happens to this. I think I've seen it before, but I can say that I've had the pleasure of uh, enjoying it. You right. phrase that so nicely. Right. Yeah. yeah. For sure. I'm also, I'm also gonna put, this is gonna seem a little bit weird. This is just salt I have for my giant salt dispenser. I'm just gonna put a little pinch of salt in there. It helps to balance out flavors a little bit. I can see that, I can see that. Okay. All right, so. Am I allowed to just sip the wine throughout? Yes, or what? that's. I'm kidding. Why do you think I cook so much at home? It's because oh, I can right. have wine. Let's go. Perfect. Okay, so we've mixed that to the point where it's incorporated. Guess mm -hmm. what? It goes in the fridge. Yeah. And we're done. That's it. Next time you see it, you eat it. Yes. Crazy. 
oh my gosh, I love this show, I love the connections, I love the conversations, but I gotta be honest, the thing that I am most proud of is the give back component. And you guys have heard me say this at the end of every show, I make a donation to a nonprofit working to end food insecurity, and Ascend Hospitality Group, AHG Cares, is matching that donation along with a donation I am making on behalf of Safeway. That means, I feel like there should be a drum roll. Drum roll, please. To date, we have raised $3,750 towards ending food insecurity in our community. That's a huge win. It's a big win. Huge, huge win. And I am so grateful for you and for Ascend Hospitality Group and coming alongside. I love it. We are always here. And that's the one thing I want everyone to know. Um, When we land a restaurant, we land a philosophy of serving a guest or serving someone who is. We are all about community. And I'm so grateful to you uh, for caring so much about making sure people have great, great food in their stomach, that they're going to school and they're going to work and they're not doing it hungry. Thank you. Absolutely. You're amazing. And thanks to Safeway. That's right. And I think with that, we're about out of time. Cheers. We've got a little, Congrats. We've got some bubbles to drink. I've always wanted to co host a show with you. Thank you for making my dream come true I today. Think this is happening. This has been great. Oh my gosh. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time on a brand new edition of I Cook, You Measure. You Measure. This is the best. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> really high like, maintenance. Let me give it a nice back. <laughs> it's lovely. That's the way. It was a challenge. How did you get there? You out? did it, though. Uh, you played soccer, I played baseball. Oh, uh, and sports saves the sports day. Sports saves Oops. the day. I Cook You Measure is presented by Ascend Hospitality Group, a black and female-led independent restaurant group based in Bellevue, Washington. The collection of concepts proudly employs more than 700 people in Washington, Oregon, Utah, and Arizona. Committed to elevating the communities it serves, AHG invests wholly in both its team members and its guests to take service to the next level. Learn more at AscendHG.com.